Today I want to show you five easy ways that you can take great photos with your drone. Hey, my name is Jake and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. So I test and review drones, cameras, lenses here in Alaska, and I give you tips and tutorials on how to use them. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. Today I'm photographing and filming these ice climbers back here out in the middle of Kinnick Glacier. Today I want to show you five easy ways you can take great photos with your drone. Doesn't matter what kind of drone you have, these will help you take really good photos. One of the easy and most simple ways you can make your drone photos look good and unique is of course straight top down shots. Top down shots are great for showing off a space from a perspective that you don't normally get or that's next to impossible to get from your normal everyday life. So top down shots are great. Now you can line everything up really straight, really square and symmetrical or you can do off center stuff too. I personally love to use lines, leading lines and I like to use them horizontally, I like to use them diagonally a lot, and especially if I can use leading lines to draw your attention to a subject in that frame, like these blue pools, something like that, will really help. But top-down shots are a great way, and probably the easiest way, to really set your photos apart when you're using a drone. And that brings us to rule of thirds. Now you can turn on your rule of thirds grid pretty much in every drone, at least every drone I've owned. And rule of thirds really helps you to get a lot more interesting and a lot more balanced framing. Basically, there's an upper and a lower third and a right and a left third. And what you wanna do is put your subject on one of those rule of thirds and then put something else, something opposite, so counterbalance on the other, the opposite rule of third. So you can use a left and right rule of third, you can use a bottom lower left and the upper right rule of third. Using a rule of third really helps to balance your photograph. Now, when you're doing things on horizons like this, you definitely wanna put your rule of third on one or the other. I typically use the upper rule of third, so the lower rule, the lower two thirds of the frame is filled with the landscape and the upper third of the frame is filled with uh, you know, sky, air, mountains, whatever. I just find that that's kind of the framing I like to use. The other thing that rule of thirds is good for is using it to kind of find your leading line. So you can use mountain landscapes, or in the case of this glacier, to bring your attention, your audience's attention, the people who are looking at your photo's attention to the subject you want them to see. So in this case, people climbing this wall of ice above this beautiful blue pool of water. But a rule of thirds really helps you to get much better framing and much better balance in your photos. And then we have my favorite way to shoot, which is auto exposure bracketing. Now, if you can shoot raw, I always recommend you shoot raw, but if you don't have a drone that will shoot raw, use auto exposure bracketing and use three or five. I find three marks works well in most situations, but five sometimes is necessary. Basically what that does is it takes three or five photos at different exposure levels, and that gives you two options. One, you can pick the photo that you like the best, or in software, you can combine all of those and create somewhat of an HDR image, which will give you much more dynamic range, especially in a situation like this, where I'm backlighting my subject against the sun and the bright snow, the ice, and it gives you a lot more dynamic range to be able to see everything you wanna see. And then we come to putting the drone in places that you just can't actually get a camera, like over this blue pool of water. I'm not gonna stand in this ice cold water for very long. I'm not gonna stand in it at all. Uh, to take photos, but I can put the drone right there and take photos from that perspective. Or I can put it just over the edge of a cliff, like right here, and get a perspective that you just can't get with another camera. And so using a drone to be able to put the camera in a location that you can't possibly put an actual physical camera is a great way to really set your photos apart because it gives a whole new perspective on the location or the things that you're shooting. That brings us to time of day. If you can shoot at sunset or sunrise, it makes everything look better. So shooting when the light is a little lower, it gives contrast, it gives shadows. Right now I'm in the high noonday sun here, so I can't do much about that. But shooting anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half before sunset or an hour to an hour and a half after sunrise will make your photos look a lot better because of a couple of different reasons. As I said, you get much more shadows, you get a lot more contrast, which contrast adds interest. And with the sunlight being lower, the color temperature of the light changes. So it makes everything look a little more pretty. It just makes everything look beautiful. That's why we call it golden hour. So shooting at golden hour, the hour, hour and a half after sunrise, hour and a half hour before sunset, 
will really make your photos look amazing. Now, if you can't do that and you're like me out here, stuck in the noonday sun, one thing you can do is really concentrate on showing a perspective of scale. So really show how big or how vast the subject that you're trying to photograph or film in their location is. You don't, with a drone, especially because you have wide, a pretty wide angle lens, you don't have to pull very far back, pull very far away to really show the entire area that your subject's in. But the key is you wanna keep your subject close enough to the drone and use those leading lines to be able to draw your audience's eye to that subject so that they see the subject and then realize, hey, that's a person climbing that giant ice wall or that's a helicopter out in the middle of that massive glacier. And that really will help people understand the scale and the size of what you're trying to photograph. Now, if you wanna see other videos about how to improve your drone video or drone photography, Click or tap right there, put together a playlist. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have questions, you can ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I gotta wait for my helicopter to get back here so I can get off this glacier and go home. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.